How can you get rid of duplicates in your dataset? Hello, I'm Philip Burton from filecats.co.uk. So in this video, we're going to have a look at a dataset that deliberately has duplications. So here we can see sys.objects, union all sys.objects. So we get numbers three all the way to 100 and something. So there's row 104, and then it repeats again. So if I show this in a simple order by, select statement, then you can see the duplications. Now, my question to you is, how can you get rid of the duplications? And before you say, okay, the answer is very obvious, it is this. I want you to come up with at least three different ways of doing this. Now, all of these ways do not need to be the easiest way possible. One of the great skills in SQL is being able to do lots of things so that when something related to another thing comes up, you can go, oh, I can do it this way. It's no good for what I'm doing right now, but it's good for this other thing. So if you'd like to do this as a practice activity, then you will find this and this in the description to this YouTube video. Good luck. So have you come up with three different ways? How many have you come up with? Well, the first obvious way is to put the word distinct. Now you notice there are 208 rows. What distinct will do is get rid of any rows which are identical to another row, just leaving one copy. So if I just write the word distinct at the front, there we go, 104 rows. That solves the problem. But I want you to come up with at least two more ways. So what other ways are there? Well, another way is to use group by. Now, group by is necessary when you're using an aggregation. So something like a sum, a count, min, max. So if I try to run this without a group by, you'll see this is invalid because the column object ID is not constrained in an aggregate function, sum, count, or a group by clause. So you have to put in a group by and anything which has not been aggregated. So if I run that, you can see that now works. We have 104 rows. Do we actually need the aggregation? And the answer is no, we don't. We can have a group by without the aggregation. So if I run that, this gives me exactly the same results as this other one with select distinct. Now, which one's better? Well, from a presentation point of view, I would say select distinct is better. It's a lot simpler just to write. However, if I put in the actual execution plan, you'll see that the query cost is exactly the same. So you don't need to worry about everything else that's here. Just have a look at this top line, the query cost relative to the entire batch. So the entire batch is 100%. This first query took 50% of the time. The second query took 50% of the time. And if you have a look at all of these symbols, the actual execution plan, you'll see that they are identical. So the computer does not distinguish the difference between select distinct and group by in terms of what it actually does. So these are two pretty good answers. What about a not so good answer? Well, let's just have a look at how we created this view. Select star from a particular table, union all. What union all does is that it keeps all of the duplicates. If I just said union, instead of having 208 rows, we would only have 104. Okay, so how can we use this to our advantage? Well, I did say this was a silly way, but it does work. Let's have our select statement and then we union it with our select statement. Now notice the order by goes at the end. There is no order by in the middle. That doesn't work. Now you may be thinking, okay, we have got 208 rows and it's going to union 208 rows. All of these are duplicates, so we're going to be left with 208. But within the 208, there are duplicates and using union as opposed to union all, gets rid of all of the duplicates. So if I run this, you will see that it gets rid of all of the duplicates. So it gets rid of three sets of duplicates. If I put union all, then the final figure 
would be 416. With union, it gets rid of all of the duplicates. We're left with 104. Now, I did say this was a bit of a silly way. Let's just see how silly. We'll go to the actual execution plan for all three of these. And don't forget, the entire batch is 100%. So this first query is 24%, so roughly a quarter of the entire batch. The second query, another 24%. They're identical in terms of the execution plan. The third one is over twice as long at 53%. And you can see that this query plan is a lot more complex. So I'm not recommending this as a good idea. I'm just saying it is one possibility. Are there other possibilities that you've come up with for how you can get rid of Jupiter? Well, I hope that you enjoyed this practice activity. If you did, why not like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so that you can be notified of more videos when they come out. If you want more practice activities, please click the link on your screen. Or why not join me in my Udemy courses where you can learn about TSQL, Database Administration, SSRS, SSAS, SSIS and more. There are full details in the description to this video or on my website, filecats.co.uk. Thank you very much for Please watching this. Please let me know in the keep comments. Learning.